Hello dear champions, welcome to the game of the day. Today we have St. Louis Rapid and Bliss tournament round for a game. Jan Nepomneshi as white is playing against Mamedarov Shahir. Here we have this interesting middle game position, it's white to move. Nepomneshi is playing a very interesting game, step by step improving the position. At the moment, it's white to move as I mentioned, bishop on h3 is not the best piece. How would you think to bring it back into the game? Just for a second, pause the video and think about it. If you here thought about pawn f5 to open a bishop on this diagonal, this has several downsides. First of all, after capturing, it's not like we're weakening very much opponent's position. e6 pawn wasn't defending the king or something doing important. So f5 isn't so strong. Secondly, after f5, there could be some options for black even to play e5, try to exchange the pawn on d4, and then the dark squared bishop on d6, which we are missing, could become stronger. So initially, white plays a different move. White goes bishop f1, attacking on the rook, and this bishop will go to another square. Rook c7, bishop to d3. First of all, bishop is joining the game and now playing against opponent's king. In some occasions, it could be a good attacker. Secondly, all the time our bishop is aiming at the pawn on a6, it's a very good strategy to locate your pieces on a multifunctional squares. Black continued knight f6, we go queen e2. Now if black is playing a5, they will give us the b5 outpost, when using it with the bishop will not be so valuable, knight b5 could be pretty annoying. So after queen e2, black decides to keep the structure, with a big price, they go queen a8. Peace is being located out of the game only to defend the pawn. Well, this is not the best use of the strongest piece on the board. Understanding that black pieces now are a little passive and on the queen side, there are some potential chances on the other side of the board. White is thinking about the attack. So here, Nipomnishi plays knight e5. Since white has doubled pawns on f4 and d4, this is at the same time giving a space advantage. And white is slowly trying to improve. It's being played rook f to c8. And here black has a very annoying idea. They would like to go knight to e4. The value of queen plus bishop pair, even though passive ones, is big whenever thinking about e4 square. This move will be annoying, there is a pin here, so we need to control the square on e4. Even though this is a little bit weakening, white king f3 is being played. This move is acceptable, because overall position is very much closed. Pawns on d4 and d5 are closing all the lines, diagonals, and weakening the king is not so dangerous. Now white is thinking about a pawn push with g4. Understanding this, black is playing pawn h5. Now if we go g4, pawn takes and pawn takes, again the e4 square is becoming vulnerable, so black will go knight to e4. For this reason, after h5, Nipomnyashi is not in a rush, he slowly tries to improve the position. Queen e3 is being played. First of all, he just in case defends the pawn on d4, secondly, queen becomes a bit stronger and closer to the king side, maybe in some occasions, some ideas like f5, queen g5. Black continued, bishop to b4, pressuring on c3, however, it's not a hanging pawn, because after rook c2, black cannot win the material. After bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, white has a strong option. Just for a second, pause the video and use your tactical skills. Can you see a long move of the bishop? We can take and play bishop h7, or we can play bishop h7 immediately, king takes and Okay, knight takes, chess base decided for me, and rook takes c3. Doesn't matter, since white's staying with the next rook exchange. After rook c2, black continued pawn g6. Now, after g6, there are so many interesting sacrificing options. Let's take a look at few of them to understand it's not working so well right now. For example, if we take knight g6, pawn takes, bishop takes g6. Well, now queen e6 is a threat, black will defend. Something like rook e7 looks strong enough. If at the moment, after g6, we play knight g6, pawn takes, queen e6 check. Black is going, king g7, again, defending everything, and now rook e8 is coming. Our queen alone cannot do much against the king. Seems difficult. After g6, if we now try to sacrifice our bishop, bishop takes g6, pawn takes. Knight g6 isn't bringing us a lot. Because of rook e8 move, everything is again getting defended. And the last thing which we are going to talk about. After bishop g6 and pawn takes g6, queen d3 seems very reasonable. Now queen g6 attacking the knight. However, there is a strong rook g7 defending move. And all of our attack is gone. 
So after g6, Nepomniuk takes a very logical decision. He improves the position further. Rook a c1. I like this style of play and during the streams and every lessons we are having, I'm all the time trying to say it. Happy pieces. Bring all of your pieces into the game. We even have a special course about it when you're thinking that some of your pieces are out of the game, not in the best position. Activate them. Okay, Rook a c1. Now black plays king g7. Looks like a solid move, strengthening the position. If you try to memorize the variations, which we just looked previously, can you see a big downside of king g7 move? Nipomnyushi immediately spots it. Just several seconds for you to pause the video and figure it out. Ah, I'm sure you thought about bishop takes, Pawn takes and queen d3 because now king is on g7, taking the square of the rook and queen g6 is unstoppable. We are gonna take the pawn, knight will be under attack, pawn on h5, our knight will be a strong attacking piece. So giving us a chance to capture queen g6 is not allowed. Only way to prevent it is to go knight e4, returning back the favor. However, this is already really bad for black. We take on e4, pawn takes and Nipomnishi plays queen e3. Shortly, we are going to understand this position. Black has a doubled pawn here. Bishop is very blocked now by the e4 pawn, no way to advance. All of black pieces are out of the game, let's say, on the queen side, on this uh, territory. White has a monster knight on e5. Our pieces are ready. Queen is close to the king. And what's the good news? We have a lot of flexibility on the king's side. We have g4 options, since black doesn't have pawn on f5. That's what Nipomishi is going to do. Immediately open the game against a very much naked, lonely king of opponent. In the course about the attack, we are going to understand in which conditions we are attacking. And the condition when opponent's king is very much exposed and alone is one of the best opportunities. So, after bishop d5, white plays g4. Pawn takes, now knight takes g4 is doable, but it's very slow. We need to play in a creative way and try to make our actions faster. Since we would like to pressure on the g-file, it's much more powerful to go with rook g2 immediately. King h7, rook takes g4. Already white is creating the first threat, we are trying to take on g6. Black needs to defend. And the next move of Nipomnyoshi is a, another good decision. King h2. Since now we are threatening to play rook g1, in many occasions with some pawn sacrifices or some other options we are going to open up the g-file and king is never required on g1 square, it's staying way safer on h2. Pay attention, why not to h1? Because black has these strong pieces on the diagonal and maybe in some occasions once we remove the queen we will allow checks on the h1 square. So king h2, black continued now queen to c8, while playing rook g1 is doable, however Nipomnishi decides here to go for a way more powerful breakthrough. One another important attacking tip. If you are trying to attack, need, you need to be as fast as possible. You need to try this. I'm not saying all the time go sacrifice push and so on, no. But if you have the idea and you can do it a bit faster, it's better to go for it. Now white immediately goes for a strong breakthrough. White played here, pawn f5. gf5 happened in the game. We will see this. Let me quickly mention that pawn takes f5 is not working. There is a little calculation here. Would you mind to pause the video and think about it? I'm pretty sure knight d5 is within the most you covered. So what happens now? Pawn takes g4 is impossible. Rook c7 check wins the opponent's queen. And after knight d5, if black is capturing the other rook on c1, we have a strong knight f6 check. Now if king h8, queen h6 is mating. And after knight f6, if black goes king g7, we are winning with rook g6, rook takes g8 and so on. That's the least we can do, most probably many checkmating ideas as well. For this reason, after f5, black has to take with a g pawn, but this also has big downsides. Now we capture rook g8. Queen takes is impossible again. We go with knight d5, knight f6 is coming, the rook is hanging at the same time, so we are winning a lot of material. And after rook g8, if black captures king takes, there again, many winning moves, Nipomnishi chooses queen g5 check. Now, if black is playing something like mm, rook g7, which happened in the game, white has the last finishing move. Pause the video and finish the game. Again, knight d5. Looks like all the tactics are being solved with knight d5 move. Knight takes, 
Now if rook g5, rook c8 check, at least is winning the rook, so king g7 pawn takes. I'm not even saying there should be way better opportunities. And after knight d5, Mamedyarov played bishop f8. At least that's what I can see in the online games. And here black resigned without waiting for the opponent's answer. 5000 moves are winning here for white, anything. Uh, knight f6 check, queen h6 is most problematic. So that's how white is winning. This was a really interesting game by Nipomnyashi because he kept the main rules of the chess game. From the middle game point like this, he all the time was improving the pieces. Bishop went here to active position, rooks joined the game, knight went to e5, queen e2, and at the decisive moment he finds correct tactic, bishop takes g6, pawn takes queen d3, and the game was winning. I hope we together enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, Jem Gabuzian was here with you, and I'm going to see you in our next videos.